Good morning and welcome to you all. It's early in the morning, just after 5 a.m. And it's quiet and a lovely time to listen, to be still. And I want to continue from last week reflecting on the power of listening. I was talking to my mother about listening and both of us agree, she at 91 and me at nearly 70, that there is nothing as powerful and transformative as the skill of listening. If we are to develop the skill of listening, and I use that word advisedly, skill, it's not something natural for us then we need to know what are the elements that make up listening. What's the anatomy of listening? And for me, there are three elements. One is silence. It's got to be quiet. It's particularly quiet inside. For listening is a form of hospitality where I clear away myself and be silent so that I can receive the other receive the other into that space, into that space. And silence is hard to come by, hard to come by. Silence is number one. Number two is paying attention, attention to the other, attention. And our attention span is under threat. You know, everybody's after our attention, Google, Facebook, all these things. That's what they're after, is to hold our attention. Netflix, roll over to the next episode. So you've got to mind our attention. And our attention span is dropping. Microsoft did a, a measure of our attention span and it was 9, 10, 11, 12 seconds. It's gone down to 8 and a goldfish is 9. So we're, we're attention is, is under threat. And the third element is humility. That one is able to put oneself aside and thereby create space for the other, the hospitality and humility that listening requires. Now, I did a counselling course once which broke out the elements of the listening skill. You know, that you, you are present to someone in the fullest possible way, physically, and that you reflect what you've heard, that you check out that you've heard what they've said that is correct. That's key, that's key. So it's a skill we can learn. And the reason we're not very good at it, for me, is because of the world we live in and the biology we've inherited. First of all, we live in a very noisy, visually aggressive world. So. There's images coming at us all the time. Our nervous system is bombarded with data coming at every angle. And that's frazzling us. And we're not, it's much more difficult for us to be present to another. We're so busy. And, and the opposite of listening is not speaking, but it's busy. It's busyness, being over busy. So that's the first reason we're, we're not very good at it. The second one is that we're biologically set up for vision, for seeing, rather than for hearing or indeed touch. Those are significant, but the major sense, 30% of our brain is taken over by vision, and two-thirds of its processing, processing capacity is used up dealing with visual information. That's a huge amount. 2% is for hearing and 8% for touch. So you can see that hearing, listening, is in big competition to get space in our brain. So again, it emphasizes the need we have to work at it, to work at it. We've got to, to be present, to listen, to hear what the other one is saying. That's why we very often close our eyes when we want to listen, because we want to cut out some of the visual data that's bombarding us. And the third reason we're not very good at it 
is, is because I think we think it's natural that I can listen, what's the problem? Hearing is natural. Hearing is natural. Our ears are always on. We don't have to switch them on. We have no ear lids to cover them. So hearing is a bit, listening is not a natural um, skill or natural ability. It's something we have to work at and learn. And if you do, the benefits are enormous. I remember a, a mother who was having terrible trouble with her son and she asked, my son is depressed, he's down. He's always comparing himself to his older brother. You know, his older brother can do this, can do that, and he's useless. And she kept, you know, trying to tell him, look at all the talents you have. You're unique in your own right. You can do X, Y, and Z. And it made no difference. The child was as, as much depressed as ever. And she asked, well, what, what can I do? Well, the answer was she wasn't listening to her son. Her son was telling her that he was miserable and he needed that desperately acknowledged, desperately acknowledged, if he was to move on. Once he had been heard, received, as he was, then later on was the time to deal with why he was feeling the way he was. Why he was feeling the way he was. There was another moment, and one of the loveliest and very important moment for me was when I was working in our school. And it was late in the evening. It was just before there were 80 boys were due to go to bed, and we were in a big dormitory and we we're having gone to have night prayer which was absolute chaos but eventually they calmed down but in the middle of them all was one boy sitting on a chair and he was miserable he was a sort of gangly sort of child easy prey or bullying and he was just tearful and miserable and I remember seeing him and I remember saying to him you know you're just miserable aren't you just miserable and at that he brightened up and I was so pleased and delighted that I'd acknowledged what he was feeling rather than say listen would you ever cop yourself on give yourself a kick and get in with all the others how can you be happy if you're going to sit there on your own but once I'd acknowledged that the child got up off his seat and went to join the others. And it was one of the most profound lessons I got in the transforming power of listening. So if there's any message I have to give at any time, it's that of the transformative, the liberating power of listening. And that we can all engage in this ministry of listening. It's free. It's something we can contribute to our world. And it's something our world desperately needs. So, I hope uh, you're well. And I hope this finds you warm and safe. And I'll talk to you next time. Mm -hmm.